greater glory. Experiencing greater glory will take, it, take lessons from two lives, one in the Old Testament and another in the New. We'll learn from Jacob in the Old Testament and we'll see another person who encountered Jesus. In John chapter 4, we popularly call her the woman in Sychar. There is someone here. They have given you a name that the Lord himself has not given you. But after tonight, God will drop that name from you. Yeah. He will give you a new name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Genesis 32, 22. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. Verse 24. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie. And the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Everything that is wrestling with you from you entering to your greater glory, tonight the Lord will silence them for you. Yeah. Verse 26, and he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. This week, someone will break into a new dawn in the name of Jesus. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Verse 28. Can we all read it together, everyone? And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Tonight, somebody will prevail. Tonight, somebody will prevail. Yes, Whatever you have struggled with, like Jacob from running from his brother to running to his uncle, Laban from carrying all the things like the, like the, the sons of Laban said, oh, the man has taken everything that belongs to our father. And he began to run again, kept on running and running and running, and running. But that night, the Lord said to him, tonight, the Lord will say to you. Amen. Oh, I said tonight, the Lord will say to you. Amen. If you believe God with me, let him hear your amen. amen. <laughs> I say, if you believe God with me, let him hear your amen. amen. Everyone that is born of God is ordained for greater glory. Every child of God is ordained for greater glory. Because in Galatians chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, So then they will be of faith, are blessed with faithful Abraham. So every man, every woman that is born into the family of God is ordained for greater glory. Because you know that the Bible calls this our God. He says, is the king of glory. And in western Nigeria, they have a song and a saying that you don't see the child of a king without knowing that this truly is the child of a king. So every man, every woman that is born of God Born by the blood of Jesus, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, is ordained for greater glory. But for us to enter into, for us to enter into greater glory in this God, for us to move from one level of glory onto another in this God, like we learned yesterday, and for us to truly experience greater glory, every man, every woman has a role to play. 
Let me tap your neighbor and say, you have a role to play. We are seeing Jacob. Even Jesus, our perfect example, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. The Bible says, Jesus, he left us an example that we should follow in his steps. We have a role to play. We have a role to play. And several lives in the scriptures, several lives in the scriptures experienced greater glory. From Abraham, the Bible says he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. You know Canaan that became the inheritance of the children of Israel? It was not Abraham who first of all started the journey to go to Canaan. His father did, but he never arrived at his destination. But tonight, everything that used to stop men, stop women, stop people in your lineage and in your generation that have been stopping people, tonight, the Lord will deal with them for you. Yes, uh oh, you didn't hear what I said? I said tonight, the Lord will deal with them for you. Tonight, the Lord will silence them for you. Yes. As he did for Abraham. So one of the blessings, you know, when we sing, Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. One of the blessings that Abraham enjoyed was the blessing of experiencing greater glory. And I am believing God with you that you and me, as we go through this week of this World Conference of Greater Glory in this year 2016, against all odds, every one of us shall be partakers in Jesus' name. I say every one of us shall be partakers in the name of Jesus. You know, one key thing that we need to do is to believe. You know, when we sing, only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe. Yes, I believe, yes, I believe, all things are possible, yes, I believe. The scripture says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And the Bible, Jesus says, he says, to them that believes, all things are possible. Jacob believed God that, well, you know, if you began to read that Genesis chapter 32, he said, you are the one who promised me. You promised me. So one thing that we need to know that will take us to our greater glory is to understand that God has promised us greater glory. Let me tap your neighbor and say, did you hear that? Yeah. He has promised you and me greater glory. And number two, you must know, Numbers chapter 29, verse 19, the Bible says, he is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Let every man be a liar. He would not lie. Like we sing, God is not a man. His word will surely come to pass. Even the choir don't even know that song. <laughs> Woohoo! Hallelujah! That's the kind of song that is. Those are biblical songs. Hello, you know the Bible says, singing to ourselves. In hymns and psalms. Biblical songs. Songs that have their root, their source in the word. That is in God himself. He said God is not a man. His word will surely come to pass. He will never, never lie. Let me tap your neighbor and say, be prepared. This season, greater glory is your portion. Is your portion. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, taking a cue from Jacob, if you look at that, Genesis chapter 32 is the chapter, I can call it the chapter of a new beginning for Jacob. We can call it the chapter of a new name. We can call it the chapter of greater glory. Because when they named him Jacob, he began to act out his name. The meaning of that name in Hebrew means to supplant. And he, he kept on acting it out. But he was ordained for something much, much greater. There is someone here tonight. What God has ordained for your life, even before you are conceived, before you are formed in your mother's womb. You know, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11, the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thought of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and an expected end. So every evil plan, every evil maneuver over your life. Maybe I'm hearing in my spirit man some people here tonight. Maybe they even gave you a name like Jacob that have been acting against your life. Against your destiny. Against what the Lord ordained for you. By the reason of tonight, every of such names, they become null and void in the name of Jesus. I said they become null and void in the name of Jesus. And tonight, God is giving somebody a new name. I said God is giving somebody a new name. So just, let's just look at a few things that we can learn from Jacob. Number one. He entered into an unholy alliance with his mother. When the mother in Genesis chapter 27, <clears throat> though in Genesis chapter 25 something had happened, but in Genesis chapter 27, the mother said, well, your father has told your brother to go and prepare a special meal and he wants to do something. And she went and did something. There was an unholy alliance. Number two, he went after what was his brother's. When the brother came, I kept on asking myself, who told him that there was something called birthright? And he said to his brother, he said, just sell me your birthright. Sell me your birthright. Everything that you are not supposed to have negotiated the way that you have negotiated the way. By the mercies of God, by the reason of this week, there shall be mercy for you. Amen. There shall be recovery for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number three. Jacob kept on running from pillar to post. He just kept on running. Was well, just running. Running, altar skater, running here and there. Like some of us. You are just running everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. You are not stable. Like Jacob said to one of his sons, you'll be unstable as water. You are not stable. There is someone like that in church this night. After tonight, what has been making you to be unstable? The hand of the Lord will come upon it. Amen. And the Lord will stabilize you. Amen. And he will fulfill Psalm 92 in your life. He said, they that are planted in the house of the Lord, they will ask what's called and they will be blessed of the Lord. That would be somebody's portion. Amen. If that is you, let him hear your amen. amen. I say, if it is you, let him hear your amen. amen. Jacob learned and perfected negotiation to his advantage. He, he learned how to negotiate to his advantage. He, from negotiating the birthright with his brother to negotiating 
business with his um, father-in-law. And so, well, when the animals are meeting and he began to do something, he, he learned and perfected negotiation to his advantage. And number five, he was always stoutly taking and using everything to his own advantage. He would enter subtly, take it, and use it to his advantage. But all of this never took him to his destination. So everything that you have been doing using human wisdom, thinking that they will take you to your destination, that have not taken you anywhere. Tonight, as we settle on this month, on this ground, on this soil, in this week, in this conference, on this night of divine settlement, the Lord will divinely say to you. I say the Lord will divinely say to you. Let's quickly look at a few steps that he took. So what are some of the steps that he took for him to experience greater glory? Number one, in everything, he never forgot God. That's why he told his uncle, his father-in-law, he said, God has promised me. And when he was going, in Genesis chapter 32, he said, God, this is what you said to me. This is what you said to me. So for you to experience greater glory, you must be able to hold on to God in the midst of the circumstances and the situations all around. Number two, he submitted all the antics, all the techniques he knew. He submitted everything to God that night when he said he had, he had acquired everything that he needed to acquire from Laban. Everything. And Laban even ran after him thinking he was going to be able to get something to grab him and take him back. But no, it was not possible. But he submitted all the antics unto God. As you submit everything to God this week, may he lift you to greater glory. May he lift you to greater glory. Number three, number three thing that Jacob did was that he ran to God and made this God his last bus stop. Hello? Let me tap your neighbor and say, have you made him your last bus stop? I mean, well, it means, well, when he told the angel in Genesis 32, 26, he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. You know, the same thing happened to Peter and the other disciples when in John chapter 6, verse 66, Jesus asked them, will you also go away? <laughs> Peter said, unto who shall we go? You are the one that has the word of life. So, if he doesn't do it for me, I am going nowhere. Hello? Until you get to that bus stop, you can experience greater glory. You know, there is a story told somewhere in a particular traditional African society. Every year they have a festival, they have a program. And the people will line up on the right, people will line up on the left. And someone will carry a heavy load. He has to carry it from the beginning of the town to, to the end of the town. And the people on the right, they will be clapping for him and telling him, look here. The people on the left will be clapping and telling him, look here. So no one, the moment the man looks here, he looks here, he looks here, he looks there, by the time he gets to the end of the, he's already totally worn out. No one carries it, 
and escape till the following year. But one particular year, it was the turn of one man to carry it. And then as he carried it, they were clapping on the right, saying, look here. He said, we will not, I will not look here. I will not look there. I will only keep looking at where I am going. The man defiled the meat that everyone who carries the load never survived to the following year. Because what? He kept it gaze. He, he looked, he was only looking at his final destination. Until you cancel it all and make this God your gaze, your final bus stop. You can't experience this greater glory that we are talking about. You know, James says, the man who is unstable, he can't receive anything from God. But tonight, everyone that have been looking here, looking there, looking here, looking there, looking here, looking there, as you look at him tonight, may there be a lifting for greater glory for you. May there be a lifting for greater glory for you. And what the Bible says, Jesus himself said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And everyone who looked up to the brazen serpent as they received succor. Tonight, I see Jesus. I see him like he was lifted up as the brazen serpent. That was a type of Jesus in in the wilderness. And he himself came and said, as Moses did it, so also everyone who looks up to Jesus tonight, as you look up to Jesus, as you look up to Jesus, may help come your way. As you look up to Jesus, may help come your way. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, it says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. So looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There was, he recognized that there was a joy ahead of him. He had to endure the cross. Excuse me cross was not a palatable experience. Hello? It was not a palatable experience. It was painful. Tap your neighbor and say it was painful. I don't know what pain someone is going through right now. But I see as you look at Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, as as he endured the cross, as you endure the pain and you look up to him, I see that pain turning to celebration. Amen. Oh, I say, I see that pain turning to celebration. Amen. You know, the Bible says, when a woman comes to the time of her delivery, there is a pain. But after the pain, joy comes. Let me tap your neighbor. After the pain, there is joy. Joy is coming your way. Lift up your right hand and say, joy, come it. Lift up your right hand and say, joy, come it. Lift up your right hand and say, this season, my joy, come it. This season, my joy, come it. Hey, I hear some people saying, Pastor, some doors have been closed to me. I announce to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, God of heaven. He says he's the one who has the key of David. And that when he opens, no man can shut. I see him opening better doors. I see him opening better doors. Tonight, 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 I see the Lord opening better doors. In the name of Jesus. Sunday, 
before the last one when we were doing the praise service here in Jesus' house. At the first service, one of the testimonies that pastor read is from one of the elders. The elder said the first half of the year was really tough and terrific. But that as we enter the second half of the year, things have begun to turn around for better. And I remember the story of one of our brothers here in Jesus' house. He's now in um, somewhere in the, in the east, in the Middle East. Is it Middle East is called? He said, as events just began to turn around in the oil industry, their contract where he works in one of the international oil companies here in town was not renewed. And God asked. The contract was about to fold up. God opened another door. And now he's somewhere in, in, in the United Arab Emirates to the glory of God. I see God opening some great doors tonight. Yeah. If you believe God with me, let him hear your amen. amen. If you believe he's opening mighty doors, let him hear your amen. amen. That was one of the things that he did for Jacob that night. Because it was, he, Jacob was, he was, he, he said, well, if my brother, my brother has promised my parents that the moment he sights me, is to yank her. But everything, every, every, every program of the enemy over your life, by the reason of this conference, the Lord cancel them. Yeah. Oh, oh. I say by the reason of this conference of greater glory, the Lord himself cancels them. Yeah. The Lord himself declares them null and void in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number four thing that Jacob did that made him to experience greater glory. He held on unto God until he got his lifting. You know, he had tried his, mother, he, he, his, his antics with his mother brought a lifting. His alliance running to his uncle brought a lifting from the lifting of marrying two women of the same parent to the lifting of taking his own share of the business by fire, by force. But <laughs> there is someone here tonight. There are certain things you have done in life that is pursuing you. Making you unsettled. Unsettled. You've been running unsettled. But when it is time as you come before the altar like we'll be seeing with the other woman too. She kept on running. But the moment she came and settled it with the king of glory, the story of her life changed. Somebody's life story is changing tonight. Amen. I said somebody's life story is changing tonight. Amen. Oh, I hear in my spirit there is someone in this meeting tonight, not only is your life story changing, you are changing the story of your family line. Yeah. The story of your family line tonight, you are changing it for better. Yeah. You know, there's, there's something they say, well, oh, don't you know, that runs in their family. It runs in their family. You have never had that kind of thing before. You have not had it before. They say, ah, don't you know their family? Oh, it runs in their family. But tonight, that negativity that runs in the family line, the Lord is changing it tonight. I say, my God is changing it tonight. The King of Glory is changing it tonight. He's changing it tonight. Why not lift up your right hand to heaven? While you are seated on your seat and just lift up your right hand to heaven and announce to him and say, O oh, thou God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Every negativity flowing in my family line tonight arise to arrest them for me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and see to him. Just arise to arrest them for me. Every negativity 
the flows in the family line. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. By the reason of that prayer, long-standing purpose and promise of God over several families that have been waiting to be made manifest. After this conference, by the reason, before the end of this conference, God is beginning a process that will bring their manifestation. He's, bring, he's beginning, he's orchestrating a divine process that will bring their manifestation in the name of Jesus. Number five thing that Jacob did, he was ready to give up everything and to hold on to the God of glory. You know, when we sing, you, you take the Owa and give me Jesus. You take the Owa and give me Jesus. You take the Owa and give me Jesus. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Everything that Jacob had accumulated from two women from the same father to everything, he was ready to give up everything for him to enter into. When you get to this point in your walk with God, when there is nothing God cannot take from you, there is nothing he cannot give to you. Hello? When there is nothing God cannot take from you, there is nothing he can give to you. When the general of Asia shared his own story of how he had um, retired from his work and all the retirement money, all the benefit. He said as he had planned how he was going to spend the money, and God said, divide it this way. Send this to A, send this to B, send this to C. He also shared the story. When at the national headquarters in the Butemeta, in the days of the founder of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pa Josiah Akendayomi, who was so heavily anointed. You need to get a book. There are a number of books written on this papa. One of them is called Warrior of Righteousness. Every, everybody needs to read that book. Everyone needs to read that book. Warrior of Righteousness. We'll make it available in the bookshop. He was so heavily anointed as we were told that when he comes to church on Sunday and some people are getting ready to go and teach Sunday school, he will look at somebody and say, ah, you want to teach Sunday school? But on Friday, this is what you did at work. So um, this Sunday, you cannot teach Sunday school. Go and sit down. Hello? So, and this man, as heavily anointed as he was, he Got to workers meeting at the Buddha Meta one Sunday and he announced to all the workers. You know, then in those days, workers will meet after service. He said, that's why when we go for the convention, you still see a column called Children of God Meet. That's how it used to be in the foundation. He said, okay, all children of God can wait. So when all the multitude have gone and then they were, he, he announced, we have a serious need in this church. So all of you, all the workers, go and close your account. 
and bring the money to the church so that the need is met before Sunday. Everybody looked at themselves and they stood up and they went away. The geo said, the following Sunday, everybody came and they said, oh, we praise God. The need has been met wonderfully. So, by the way, how many of you children of God actually obeyed the instruction? And then the general Vassal said he saw his wife's hand up. He saw his hand up. And they looked around. No other person. He said he looked at himself and said, as if something has entered into your head. But when you get to that bus stop, when there is nothing God cannot take from you, there is nothing he cannot give to you. That was the bus stop that, jo that Jacob got to that night at Peniel. When he sent everything, everything that he had fraudulently taken away from his father-in-law, from his brother, and sent them away. And all of a sudden he said, I don't need any other thing. Only you. Only you. Only you. Only you. There are people in church tonight under the sound of my voice. You know what you have done. Oh, pastor, are you seeing it? I may not see it clearly and expressly, but there is a God tonight who wants to say to you, if you will release it, if you will open it up to him. And like I said, there is another woman in John chapter 4 that we can learn from, just a few things, and then we'll pray. One, this woman had a strong search for the true and living God. John chapter 4, we call that woman the woman in Sychar. This woman was so traumatized and troubled. I don't know who you are in church, but because she was ordained for greater glory, she had a strong search for the true and the living God. Number two, she was ready to submit and surrender absolutely to this God. That was why when Jesus had an encounter with her, you know where the encounter took place? At the well of Jacob. Hello? At the well of who? Someone will come to the well of Jacob tonight. Someone will come to the well of Jacob tonight. Someone will get to the well of Jacob tonight. And number three, she was ready to shine the light. That's the whole essence of greater glory. Like I said, in Western Nigeria, they will say, where there is no how you will see the child of a king, and you will not know that this is the child of a king. Like today, in our days, oh, you know, see children of God, no difference with, with uh, the, the people of the world. But when you see the child of a king, you say, oh no, there is something that tells you this is the child of a king. Tonight, this God is in the house. Tonight, this God is here. Tonight, he has promised. Tonight, he says, he is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. That is why ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Why not rise to your feet tonight and just bless this God and say, Lord, thank you. O thou God of Jacob, I magnify you. Are you giving him praise? Give him praise tonight. Just give him praise tonight. Just magnify him tonight. Exhort him, exhort him, exhort him, exhort him, exhort him tonight. Give God praise in the house. Let him hear you tonight. Say, Lord, thank you tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like you did for Jacob. Yes, Lord, you will divinely settle me tonight. Yes, Lord, like you did for Jacob, you will divinely settle me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
Lift up your right hand to him and announce to him loud and clear, Father Lord. Father Lord. Oh, loud and